So this is a periodic table, you should recognise it, but I've taken it from chemistry. This is actually the OCR A-level chemistry one, and we're going to make it a bit more physics-y, and we're going to be investigating the ratio of protons to neutrons in different elements. So what I have here is a bit of Lego, and to represent hydrogen, I'm going to be using one of these yellow bricks here, and that's going to represent a proton. So this one here is representing hydrogen. For helium, uh, it has two protons, and the number 4.0 underneath is the average um, atomic mass, and that's because on average helium has two neutrons. So I'm going to use my red bits of Lego to be my neutrons, and we've got two of these uh, ones here to be my two protons, and in the nucleus we have two protons and two neutrons. So that's the first element, that's the second. The third one on the periodic table is lithium. This one here has three protons, and the number of neutrons, it says here the, um, the number is 6.9. So the difference between 3 and 6.9 is 3.9, but that's just going to be the average for all the different isotopes. So I'm going to round that up to 4. So lithium has 4 neutrons. There we go. So we can see we're starting to build... Um, well, it could be a quite a large structure by the end of it. And to make it a large structure, we need loads of Lego. So what I have is this massive tray here full of uh, protons and this other massive grapnel tray full of neutrons. There are hundreds, there's well over a couple of thousand bits of Lego in these massive grapnel trays. So what I'm now going to do is just start to work my way through the elements. So the next one is beryllium, which has four protons and it's got five neutrons. So I suspect this is going to take a while. So I've now done the first eight elements. We can see that this is just increasing by one at a time. It's a bit more sort of jaggedy on this one, but a lot of them, uh, so we've got helium, we've got things like carbon and oxygen, they all have an equal number of protons and neutrons. I guess uh, there's a big amount of periodic table here. I haven't completed much of this just yet. So I have even more Lego and we're going to continue this along. So yeah, this could take a while. I'll be back soon. This is actually taking a lot longer than I thought. However, I've now done just the first 30 elements. I can see the numbers get quite high here. So um, you might see there's a bit of orange down here. This just represents every 10th element. So number 10, we have neon. This one over here, number 20 is calcium, and then number 30 is zinc. And you might notice that for the first 20 or so, we have roughly an even number of neutrons and protons. But now we're getting a bit higher. We can see that the red column is starting to get higher than the yellow column each time. So we're starting to have a bit of an upward trend in the number of neutrons in each of these isotopes, or each of these elements. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to listen to some podcasts, maybe a bit of Dr. Carl, um, you know, just listen to something while I spend, I suspect, the next half an hour to an hour just building really tall columns out of Lego. My only concern now is actually how, um, I suppose, how strong they are, you know, the kind of structural integrity, because these ones over here, the taller they get, the less stable they are. And each one of these columns is still literally just this pile of two by two bricks. So I'm going to see how much higher I can go. Oh. So this has taken a little bit longer than expected. It's been quite a long, boring build, but, and it did fall over a few times, uh, you can see along here we have this kind of linear increase in the proton number because we've got all of the different elements. We go up to number 52 here, which is tellurium, and in red we have the number of neutrons, which we can see is roughly equal, and then after about 20 it tends to get higher and higher and higher. And effectively, the more protons we have, we have a bigger excess or a bigger difference in the number of neutrons inside the isotope. Now, we don't normally display it like this. Instead, we actually have something called an NZ chart, where along the bottom we have the number of protons and at the side we have the number of neutrons. And what we can see is that for the first 20 elements or so, we have an approximately equal number of protons and neutrons. And then, as we have heavier elements, which have a lot more protons, we have to have an even greater number 
of neutrons. Now we can also look at this nuclear chart in Lego, where again across the bottom we have the number of protons and up the side the number of neutrons. In black are the stable isotopes, but then we have different colours that represent different sorts of unstable isotopes, and the colour really represents the type of radioactive decay they undergo. Perhaps it's alpha, perhaps it's beta, or occasionally even spontaneous fission. So why is it then that we always have this additional number of neutrons? Well, it's effectively because the yellow parts here, the protons, all have a positive charge, and that means all of the protons inside an atom, inside the nucleus, are repelling away from each other, and it's a strong nuclear force which is pulling them in uh, and is attractive over that short range. Now that works okay, where you have a relatively no low number of protons, but when you get things which have lots and lots of protons, we need these neutrons to effectively space them apart, so that electrostatic repulsion is weakened because the protons are slightly further apart from each other, and that's where we have the neutral neutrons which kind of get in the way and again help with that strong nuclear force which is attracting it together. There's going to be a limit at some point, and that's why we don't have an endless number of really heavy isotopes, because effectively if you have too many protons together, no matter how many neutrons you have, there's just too much of this electrostatic force pushing everything apart, um, and that means that we then get this spontaneous fission, which is why it's really, really hard to get really, really heavy isotopes or really, really heavy elements. So, this is... Um, just something I built out of Lego. Uh, I think this is as far as I've got because it definitely gets really unstable. But it's really interesting to actually visualise what's going on inside the nucleus of different sorts of elements.